Hello everybody and welcome back to the multiplayer project where I know I said with we'd be doing tile set utilization I'm kind of bumping that one back because I didn't really have the prep time that I wanted to work on that today So instead we're going to work on nav tree generation and pathfinding which is something I can do pretty simply But also needs to be done. So let's go ahead and hop into our where do I want to put this even? Representation maybe? Sure, we can put this in representation, I suppose. Oh, hello, Operation Logistics. You can see I was looking at our old pathfinding script from Operation Logistics. We're going to kind of use some ideas of that. It's going to be the same algorithm, but it's going to be a slightly different implement implementation. So let's actually create ourselves a new folder here in our scripts folder. And we're just going to create this and call it Navigation. Okay, we're going to now do a... C-sharp script, and this is going to be pathfinding. We're also going to create a script here as soon as it's done compiling that. There we go. No, not show and explore. Go away. We're going to do another script here, and we're going to call this navnode. Excellent. Now, will navnode be a mono behavior? Probably not. This is pretty much just a data class. So all we're going to do is we'll have our nav node, and this is going to contain three things ultimately, I think. Public bool occupied equals false. Public bool walkable equals true by default. And then we'll also have this contain public vector3 position. Okay, so the reason we're not having this be a mono behavior is because we don't really need this to be in the world, per se. This is more a data storage class. And we're just going to have a series of nine of these nav nodes for each of our positions. And we're also going to need an array. Actually, we'll do it via a list. Public list nav node connected nodes. Excellent. So now that we have that, we're not actually setting up our nav mesh just yet, but we can go into our tile and work on that. Excellent. So we'll just get rid of the start and update there. And then how do I want to set this up? I kind of want this to be set up in a little bit better of a way, but we'll probably come back to this. In fact, we'll put this in our to do's here better layout for walkability on tile. Okay. For now, we'll, we'll just do this as a set of booleans. So this is going to be a public bool and we're going to essentially we're going to label these as the particular points. So we're going to have it's a three by three grid, right? So the center point will be the center and then we'll label each one around it by direction. So we'll have center walkable. Actually, I just had an idea. Let's go back into our nav node and let's make this system.serializable. And let's hop over to our tile here and we will say that this is going to be public nav node center and we'll do a header here and we'll call this navigation so that's our public nav node in the center and then public nav node this would be we'll go with north south east and west and then we'll also do a public nav node this will be northeast Northwest, Southeast, and Southwest. Okay, so that's all nine of our nav nodes, right? And now if we hop over into Unity. Hmm, serialization depth limit seven exceeded. Right. Because these have a list of nav nodes. Which we don't actually need to serialize system dot how do we do that 
non-serialized. That's what it is. Okay, that should cause that to go away. Maybe not. I only want this serializable so that it shows up in the inspector. That's the only real reason I want that. But uh, we'll clear that for now, and we'll see if that runs into any issues. And I'm just wondering where our tiles... Oh yeah, it's in representation, isn't it? Yeah, it's in tile sets here. Which should probably be its own location. We'll go ahead and do that. Excellent. Tile sets is now just its own folder in representation and is no longer in scripts. That's ideal. So we'll hop into our prefabs over here and we'll look at this base tile. We don't need this locked anymore. And yeah, this is not necessarily set up in the best possible way, but you can see here that we can set these positions as needed. Excellent. So realistically, these positions will basically always be the same, right? So the center will always be at 0, 0, 0, 0, or three zeros, actually. So if we bring this, actually, if we look at this in the prefab editor, can't really see here, but if we bring in a tree, then in theory, we should be able to see this. This is not where we want this to be. We'll place this there. And we will change this rotation. Excellent. So we can see that this tree is currently at position zero, right? And then if we duplicate the tree, like so, and move it down to here, we can see each of these trees are now at the locations where our navigation, our, our navigation utility script here is going to be. So that gives us all of our nine locations. And in reality, when we spawn these, we'd want to spawn them slightly offset and, you know, kind of random within their little square. Overlapping isn't too big of a deal, but it, it, it'll probably happen. So we can see now, if we go into top view, that we've got our center here. And then this would be north, south, east and west. This would be our northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest. Excellent. So we now know these positions and uh, we can put those in, but I want to do that by default. So let's go into our, let's see here, it needs to be in the tile, which actually got closed because I moved tile sets. Okay. So center is fine to leave as is. North, south, east, and west, this is going to get maybe a little bit messy. Let's go ahead and put in a region here so we can hide this. So this would be region and this would be something along the lines of nav nodes. And then we'll do an end region. Excellent. And then of course we're going to need a way to link these nodes to the ones that they are connected to, but we'll do that in a little bit when we're actually doing the utilization of the map. That'll be probably next episode. So the center is fine to leave as is, but north equals new nav node. And then we're going to want to initialize one bit here. And so that would be something along the lines of uh, position equals new vector three. And this position, we would want to be equal to our north position, which is up on the y axis in theory. Right? North is up on the y axis instead of like this, because if we go into this view. Yeah, this might be the reverse of what we're trying to do here because this is a minus one on the Y. Let's go ahead and get rid of these actually and we'll exit that and instead we'll just put in a pine tree right here and we'll put this in at position zero zero. Excellent. And then we'll move this on the Z axis to one. So north is up on the z-axis, south is down on the z-axis. 
So north should be at a position of 0x, 0y, and 1z. Excellent. Of course, that's creating some errors. I think, actually, we don't want to have... Yeah, no semicolon there. So I'm just going to make the, try to make this a little more readable. Public nav node south. This would then need a semicolon there. South would then equal a new nav node as well. And we will do the same thing here. And in fact, we could probably make this all be one line to try to make this look a little bit better. It's not going to look fantastic because each one of these is going to need to have a different position. And we might actually want to have an enum up here. Public enum. And this would be direction, or rather, position in tile. Which would then be something like center, north, south, east, west, northeast, northwest, southeast, and southwest. And then we'll also have a public position in tile. Position in tile. Wonderful. Okay, so with that, we'll also want to set that here. So with that, we probably do want to split this off into multiple lines. So then we're going to need a comma here, and we'll do position in tile equals position in tile dot north. Okay, excellent. So then south is going to be equivalent to pretty much the same thing. And we'll have that be position equals new vector 3. This is going to be 0, 0, negative 1. Oh, of course, we don't need a semicolon there. There we go. This would then be position in tile equals position in tile dot south. And we're just going to need to do the same thing for all of these. Slightly tedious, but not the absolute worst. As I apparently get some hiccups. Hopefully those go away quickly. So we're going to do public nav node east equals new nav node. And we're going to do the same thing here, of course. This is going to be position equals new vector 3. And this is going to be east, which should, if we come back into unity here and look at the top view here, east should be positive x. So this should be 1, 0, oops, 1, 0, 0. And that should be, in fact, a comma. Oh man, I always do this. Whenever I'm initializing a new instance like this, I always, always want to put a semicolon on every line. But it doesn't work. <laughs> so this is going to be position in tile equals position in tile dot east. Once again, I tried to put a semicolon there. And now we're going to do public... And this, of course, needs a semicolon. Now we're going to do public nav node west equals new nav node like that and we will do position equals new vector 3 and this will be on the negative x axis 0 0 position in tile equals position in tile dot west excellent Okay, so next up we're going to have to do the intermediate positions, right? But we also need to do the center position. Now, technically here, we don't need to set the position because the position is already set. By default, it defaults to vector 3.0. We'll do it anyway, just to remain consistent. Equals new vector 3. This would be a 0, 0, 0. And then position in tile equals position in tile dot center. Excellent. And that does not need a semicolon. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this now, and we're going to delete this here, 
And we're going to paste this in one, two, three, four times. Of course, this is going to cause some issues. Okay. So we will then take this to be the northeast equals new nav node. And east is positive on the x-axis. And north is positive on the z-axis. So we'll do that. And we'll have this set to northeast. Fantastic. This one will, of course, be northwest, which is negative on the x-axis and positive on the z-axis. And this will be position and tile dot northwest. This one will be southeast, which is negative, or actually is positive on the uh, x-axis and negative on the z-axis. So that will be position in tile dot southeast. And then west here will be changed to southwest, which will be negative on the x-axis and z-axis and set to position in tile dot southwest. Okay, so now it should automatically set our position and our position in tile for us when we go into Unity here and take a look at these tile prefabs. Which it did not currently do, because I think we have a compile issue. Or we just need to reset this. Yeah, we just needed to reset the tile script. Okay, did these, did these change, or do they all need to be reset? Technically, they all need to be reset. Okay. Can we just search by tile to see all of the prefabs? Surprisingly, we can. So we're just going to select all of these prefabs that have tile on them. And we are going to go ahead and reset that. Excellent. There may be a couple that we missed. I mean, we didn't get the ones that have the non-tile components. But we also aren't really working on those just yet. Okay, so we now have our positions here all set up. And by default, if we put the tile base in here, by default, it will have our nine nav positions, and all of them are correctly set up in terms of their positioning, and they're all set to walkable and not occupied. Now, there there is a difference between walkable and occupied, and that is we need to check what is occupying it to see if we can walk through that thing or not. But uh, we'll come back to that. A little bit later on. So that is the basics that we're going to be using for our actual nav nodes there. So let's go ahead and now create ourselves our actual pathfinding class here. So in the navigation script here, or rather the navigation folder here, we're going to open up our pathfinding script. There we go. And we are going to create ourselves a couple of things here, but this is going to be a public static class. Pathfinding. And it's not going to be a mono behavior. We probably will need Unity Engine. We'll definitely need system.collections.generic. I don't think we'll need system.collections, though. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to do public static float. And this is going to be approximate distance and that's going to be from nav node to nav node or vector 3 to vector 3 so we'll do nav node a or rather we'll do nav node from and nav node 2 i was going to do a and b but i feel like from and 2 are a little bit clearer so we'll also create an overload for that public static float approximate distance and that'll be vector 3 from and vector 3 to. Excellent. Now both of those are going to do internally pretty much the same thing. This here is going to simply take the uh, from and to there. Um, okay, I guess this is becoming a thing. Go away windows. No, seriously. Go away, Windows. Like, no, seriously. Okay, I will, um... I will deal with that later. 
Windows apparently is wanting a reboot, but uh, we will deal with that in a moment. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to just simply for this one, we will return approximate distance from dot position to dot position. Okay, so that will work just fine. But obviously we haven't implemented this one just yet. And so that's what we're going to do. This is just going to be the Manhattan distance, not the real distance. And the reason we're using Manhattan distance here as opposed to real distance is I don't want to do a square root call. And I don't really want to be comparing squared coordinates here. I mean, we could just take the square magnitude. That's a thing that we could do. But I kind of don't want to do that. So first thing we need to check is... Well, Vector3s can't be nullable, right? I'm pretty sure Vector3s are not a nullable type. Yes, Vector3s are not nullable. So we don't need to do a check there, although we should do a check here. If from equals null or to equals null, then we should simply debug.log error. And that error will be pathfinding dot approximate distance unknown parameter past. No, I still don't want to search. <laughs> okay. So there's that check. Wonderful. And then we'll simply return negative one. Or maybe we should return instead mathf.infinity because of the way we're going to use this. Okay. So, with that done, we should probably, at this point, implement our Manhattan distance here. So, we're just going to simply take our positions here. We're going to return. This is going to be a pretty simple calculation. That's generally how Manhattan distance works. We don't really care whether from or to is higher numbers. We just want the ma the absolute value. So we'll use mathf.abs. And then we'll take from location dot x minus to location dot x plus mathf.abs. And we will take from location dot z minus to location dot z. Excellent. Of course, from, in, from location and to, to location are not terms we're using. I was copying that for reasons unknown. <laughs> so that gets us our Manhattan distance, which is simply the absolute value of the difference in x's plus the absolute value of the difference in y's. Now, that is not the real distance, but this will simply get us what we need to get started on the real distance. Excellent. So we've got our overload and we've got our real function here. We are going to need a comparison function. So we'll do a private static int compare f. And this will be comparing the f from... Uh, this will be from nav node from and nav node to. Excellent. And yeah, nav node from and nav node to. That is correct. Although let's here call it A and B. This is a comparison, not really a uh, measurement. So simple enough. If A dot F is greater than B dot F, which does not exist, by the way, then we want to return one. Excellent. Otherwise, if A dot F is less than b dot f, we will in that point in that case return negative one. Otherwise, if it gets through both of those, they're equivalent, so we'll return zero. Fantastic. So we will need something here for that. So we will do a public float f equals mathf.infinity just to start it. Excellent. And now we will also do a system.nonserialized. And this will be a public 
nav node, and we will call this the navigation parent. Excellent. Okay, so now we are pretty much ready to start implementing our actual pathfind function, which we will do right here. This will be a public static list of... This will be a list of vector threes. Pathfind. And then we're going to pass this in as a... Uh, We're going to pass this in as navnode from navnode to vector3 final position. Actually, um, yeah, we'll just do something like this. Navnode from vector3 final position. Nope, I changed my mind. We're going to do vector3 from and vector3 final position. Okay, so we're going to need to find our entry point here, first of all. We're going to need to find our nav node that is closest to this from point, as well as our nav node that is closest to this final position. But we need to keep the final position around, for sure. So, how are we going to go about doing that? Well, we could create perhaps a static function in the nav node that returns the nearest nav node instance, although I kind of hate that concept. We could do one in the tile, or we could do one in the map. And that makes the most sense to me. Now, we're not currently doing too much with the map here. We don't care about from UDP message for right now. What we can do, I suppose, is create ourselves a function here. And that would be public nav node find nearest nav node from position. And that would take in a vector three position. Okay, now that currently doesn't return anything, obviously. So what are we gonna need to do here? We're gonna need our actual map, which is going to probably be a uh, either a 2D array or a list of a list. And I'm leaning towards it being a 2D array. So we'll do something like public tile map equals new tile. And this would be something like width and height. For right now, we'll say that it's 100 by 100. Uh, invalid rank specifier. Oh, right. Of course. And then we would need to have this be like that. Okay, so that gets us a 2D array. And we'd need to initialize this at a particular size, and that can be something that we send from the server as part of the map message. So, like, for example... We can just add that here. Case map size x. And then we would have that be public int map size x map size y. Excellent. And we can just not initialize map to start with. And then this would be equal to map size x equals int dot parse parts one. And then the same thing for y here, case map size y. And then that would be map size y equals int dot parse parts one. Of course, the server doesn't currently send us anything of the sort, but we can support it for right now. Excellent. So, let's go ahead and say something along the lines of, well, we're going to need a list here, and we'll have that, that be a list of nav nodes, and we'll call that the open list equals new list nav node. 
Excellent. We're going to also, just to make this nice and quick, we're going to have a hash set for comparison. And we're going to keep the open list and the open list hash pretty much identical at all times. Hash set of nav node. And it's going to be open list hash equals new hash set of nav node. Now, do we actually need both a list and a hash set? Hang on. Open list hash zero dot. Can we not access it? Yeah, we can't apply indexing to that. Okay, that's why I have two here. That's fine. So we're then going to also have a closed list. So a list nav node. And that's just how the A star algorithm works. Closed list equals new list of nav nodes. And we're also going to have a hash set for that. Nav node. And the closed list hash is going to be equivalent to a new hash set of type nav node. And like I said, the reason that we have this is just to check to see if it's contained within the list is quite slow, but we can do that very quickly in the hash set. So we have those declared. So these are create our list objects. Wonderful. So next we are going to need to determine our start and end-ish points. So, nav node, we're going to need access to our map, actually. So we're going to need to pathfind on map, map, vector3 from, and vector3 final position. So we're going to need to determine our start and end points by saying nav node start node equals, this is going to be equivalent to something along the lines of map, dot get what did I call that find nearest nav node from position okay find nearest nav node from position and then we pass in from now of course that doesn't exist yet and we will implement that in a little while we're also going to need to say nav node end node which is not technically our final position equals map dot find nearest nav node from position and that'll be final position. But we're going to keep our final position around for sure. We're not going to manipulate that at all. Okay. So we're going to need to go ahead and put in another couple of variables in the nav node. This will be public float g equals mathf.infinity and public float h equals mathf.infinity. Excellent. So, these are just the variables that we're going to be using to determine our length so far in the path and our distance from, our approximate distance from this location to our endpoint. Okay, so let's hop back into our pathfinding here, and we'll need to initialize those in our first location. So, from.h equals, nope, uh, this needs to be start node, start node dot h equals, and this will be approximate distance, and then this will be, f well, we're just going to use the nav nodes here, I think. Actually, no, we're going to use vector three, and we're going to have this be start node, actually from, and this is going to be going to final position. Excellent. So that gives us our approximate distance from our start location. Technically, that's not from our start node position, though. So we should probably actually have this be start node dot position. That might cause some awkwardness in our pathfinding. But I doubt it, because we can just remove the start node from our path. So that'll be fine. And we can also remove the end node, which we'll need to. So then we'll also need to set start node dot g equal to zero. We've not had anything on our path so far. And then from dot f equals from dot g plus from dot h. Nope. This is, of course, start node. <laughs> I always do this when I change variable names. 
Okay, start node dot H. And this should not be get hash code. This should be G. Wonderful. Okay, so this is just initialize our first object. Okay. So now we're going to need to also go ahead and add this to our open list. So open list dot add. This will be start node. And we're also going to add this to our open list hash. Open list hash dot add start node. Wonderful. Next, we're going to go ahead and do a while loop. While open list dot count is greater than zero, we will need to sort this list. So open list dot sort, and we'll sort this using our compare f function that we created, and that just checks the f value of everything in the list and sorts it accordingly. And then we will say nav node current equals Open list zero, which is our current suspected best option. And then we will remove that from the open list. So open list dot remove current. And then we'll also do open list hash dot remove from. Actually, this will not be from. We'll be removing this from the... Uh, we'll just do current as well. We'll remove that from the... Uh, Open list hash. Wonderful. And we've already considered these now, so let's go ahead and add it to the closed list. Closed list dot add current and closed list hash dot add current. Wonderful. Now we need to check if our current nav node is equivalent to the nav node that we're trying to get to, which in this case is actually our end node. If that's the case, then we are going to need to iterate through this and find our way back. So we will do bool in parents equals true. We'll create a list of vector three and we'll call that path and we'll make a new list for that, equals new list of vector threes, and then path.add. We'll add our current item as our first item here. Wonderful. And this should, of course, be current.position, because this is a list of vector threes. Okay, next we will do another while loop here, while in parents. If current dot navigation parent is not equal to null, then we know that it has a parent, which is great. And we will simply say at that point path dot add current dot pathfinding parent, which is actually navigation parent here, and that will be dot position. Wonderful. Else in parents equals false. It doesn't have a navigation parent, so we know that it uh, is our starting point. Wonderful. And then we are just going to say current equals current dot pathfinding parent, which is navigation parent. Excellent. Okay, so that creates our return list. Of course, we aren't actually adding these parents in just yet, but that's fine. So now we're going to iterate through our closed and open list and make sure that everything is reset back to the way it needs to be. For each nav node node in closed list, we're going to say region dot pathfinding parent. Not like that. Node dot pathfinding parent, which is navigation parent. I changed so many things. Navigation parent <laughs> equals no. And then we'll do the same thing in the open list. For each nav node node in open list, node.navigation parent equals no. Then we will reverse our path, path.reverse. There we go, because it comes in backwards. And now 
we need to do a couple of things because we have our starting point being the nav mesh that or rather the the nav node that we are closest to we don't need that so path dot remove at process used by visual studio has encountered an unrecoverable error we recommend saving your work and then closing and restarting visual studio i'm gonna save this and press on and hopefully it doesn't crash okay so we're going to do path.remove at zero. That will remove that very first navigation parent. We do not need that. Instead, we're just going to move from our current position to the next position. We're also going to remove the final component. So path.remove. Remove. In fact, let's do this a little bit differently. Instead of doing remove at zero, let's just call remove. It's a little bit slower, but I don't think we're going to have too much of an issue. So we want to remove start node dot position. And I feel like this is just a little clearer on what it's doing. And then we'll also remove end node dot position. And then we'll do path dot add to add in our final position to make it look like there's fewer nodes involved than there actually are. And then we'll simply return path. Wonderful. Now, of course, we're not currently done because we don't necessarily know what happens if our current is not equal to our destination. So let's hop down over here and we are then going to calculate that. So we're at this point, going to do a for each nav node node in this will be in current dot connected nodes. Excellent. And the connect current dot connected nodes will be assigned a little bit later on. Now we need to check a couple of things. If node dot walkable with a capital W, which does not exist. Nope, I want it to be capitalized, Visual Studio. And, if I can find that key, there we go. Not closed list hash dot contains node. So if we haven't already considered it and it's walkable, let's go ahead and put in this walkable property here. That will be a public bool walkable. And this will just be get set for now. So this will be a property and this is going to be what's going to take into account this occupied. But we'll come back to that a little bit later on. So if it's walkable and it's not already been considered, then we need to check to see if it's not currently on the open list. If not, open list hash dot contains node. And this is why we're using these hash lists, is for these dot contain calls, because it's much, much faster to use a hash list. So if if it's not on the open list, then we will add it to the open list. Dot add node. We'll also add it to the open list hash. Excellent. And then we'll say node dot pathfinding parent, which is actually navigation parent here, equals current. Excellent. And then node.g is equivalent to current.g plus we're from here going to approximate distance between node.position and final position. Excellent. Okay, and now we're going to say node.h is equivalent to the same thing, approximate distance between node.position and final position. Wonderful. And then we're going to do the F here, which is node.f equals node.g plus node.h. And actually, this should not be the final position. This should be current.position. There we go. That was a mistake. I definitely made a mistake there. Otherwise, if it's already on the open list, then we're going to need to see if this path 
that we're currently considering into this tile is a better path than the one we've previously considered. And if so, then we are going to need to go ahead and make that be our current path for this tile. So we're going to say float g temp is equivalent to current.g. And that's going to be the same thing that we did here, actually. Equal to current.g plus approximate distance between the node.position and current.position. If our g temp is less than the current node.g, then we're going to say node.pathfinding parent, which is navigation parent here, equals current. And then node.g equals g temp. And node.f equals node.g plus node.h. We could make f into a property and just have it auto calculate. Let's do it. So f, we're going to do a private set. And then we're going to do get. And then this is just going to simply return g plus h. Wonderful. And this should really probably be capitalized since it's a property. I agree, Visual Studio. So let's hop over into our pathfinding. This is going to break some things. We no longer need to put that in there. And then we no longer need to put this in either. Or this. What other errors do we have here? Not all code paths return a value. Yep, that's fine. This will be capital F now. Like so. Okay, and now we've got one more error, which is just not all code paths return a value. That's fine. So, we're now done with this for each loop. And let's hop out of that, which should be after this while loop. We have gotten through the while loop. We have checked everything in the open list, including all of the things that we added to the open list. And we didn't find anything. So... At that point, let's go ahead and say debug.log error. Pathfinding failed. Okay. And now let's actually copy this little bit right here. And let's create ourselves a function. We're going to call this reset navigation parents. And then we'll go ahead and generate that method. Wonderful. And we're just going to paste that in there. Glorious. So, oh, we don't know about the close list and the open list here. Hmm, okay. I guess we'll have to pass it in. List nav node closed list list nav node open list. Okay. So we'll just pass those in. This would be closed list and open list. Excellent. And then we'll just paste that in right there. And at that point, we will return no. Okay, no issues found. So that is the general algorithm that we're going to be using. This is a pretty standard implementation of A star. I've made a few alterations here and there, but uh, this is ul ultimately this is a very standard implementation, I think. So that's going to be how we're going to do our pathfinding. And because we made this a static class that doesn't actually rely on anything in Unity, including the vector threes, which are right here, that means that we can pretty much just copy nav node and pathfinding almost verbatim into the server. There's a few things that we'll have to change, but overall that's going to be how that's going to work. So we're going to need something along the lines of a get neighbors call somewhere. We're going to need to populate these. So let's uh, put some... The, the nav tree generation kind of didn't happen this episode, did it? Pathfinding did, but uh, in the coming soon here, let's think about things that we need to do. Nav node neighbors is something that will need to happen. Uh, let's see here. We'll need to actually generate the nav nodes. I mean, we can create the nav nodes as needed on the tiles. Server side pathfinding will be necessary. And 
yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So next episode is likely going to be Navnode Neighbors. Unless I, you know, decide to do something entirely different, which is very possible. I've done that all the time. <laughs> However, I'm going to go ahead and put a cut in here, and next episode, we'll tackle what's next episode next episode. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time.